So we finally rap on Ghosts Can't Do It, and I'm about to head off to the rap party when I get the call from Tony Quinn. Marty, that horse's ass Trump is coming to the rap party. Why don't we blow it off? I know this place in the village. Best Italian food in the entire city. Well, you know, given the choice between being in the same room as Donald Trump or digging into a fine pasta dish, which way would you swing? So, we get to the village, and Tony takes me to this restaurant called Martinelli's. We walk in, the owner sees us and gives Tony a big hug, and Tony bellows, My friend Marty and I have just finished working on the worst film ever made, and we demand sustenance. Bring us your best dishes and your finest wines, for tonight we feast! And feast we did, spaghetti drenched in sauce, with meatballs the size of a baby's fist. Lobster ravioli and pesto sauce, lamb chops in rosemary and olive oil, garlic bread that was more garlic and butter than bread. The fact that I have lived 35 years and counting after that meal speaks well of my family stock. Well, I'm getting into my dessert, a ricotta and cinnamon trifle, as the owner's daughter is singing selections from Verdi, and I notice that Tony is missing. And I'm concerned because I didn't have my wallet with me and he was paying. And it didn't help that the meal cost about as much as my plane ticket home. So I check the men's room and I find Tony balls deep in the college age waitress who had been serving us all evening. Now before you get too concerned, it was not a Harvey Weinstein like situation. No, it was consensual. And I have to say, vigorous as all get out, which was impressive given that Tony was 73, which was the age that my penis decided to retire from public life. So, I ducked out and went back and finished my trifle while Tony finished his. The interesting thing is I ran into the waitress the next day at a bodega and she told me that being with Tony was like being fucked by her favorite uncle, minus the incest, which I absolutely did not ask to hear. That was in response to me saying, where can I find the orange juice? But I think I understood her point. Anthony Quinn was one of the most alive people I had ever known in my entire life. He wrote, he acted, he painted. He grabbed life by the balls and squeezed tight. He got an Oscar nomination for Zorba the Greek, which was probably the easiest day's work he ever had, because that's who he was. And that's why Trump hated his guts, because Tony was everything that Donald Trump would never be. That and the racism. The racism was number two with a bullet.